I am Zaki Ibrahim. I write music. I I'm a bit of a nomad and uh, living in South Africa and Cape Town, South Africa, and kind of bouncing between Toronto and South Africa as a songwriter, composer, an artist. My name is Alistair Johnson. I'm a music producer, DJ, composer here in Toronto. I work with uh, artists such as Zaki and yeah, write for TV shows and commercials as well. I've been working with Alistair since 2011. Before that, it was like 2006 or something, when I was really starting to think about putting an album together, my first album. I was living in South Africa at the time. Each year, she would come back, mostly in the summers, I think, and we just kept putting ideas together. Because I discovered how well we worked together, everything that I had been doing before, I was kind of like, I need to run all of this through Alistair. The album is called Secret Life of Planets. Like if you know The Secret Life of Plants, it's a book, um, but then also a documentary and also a, a soundtrack that Stevie Wonder did and the idea that time isn't linear and nothing is new and all of that kind of thing and it really started spinning and creating something really interesting, I think. If we're talking about like going through like eras or going through like times and that kind of thing, the last three years, I feel personally that I, might have lived three or four different lives. So many huge things happened. I became a mom, my, my dad passed away in this time. My dad is a huge part of my life. Um, just kind of stepping into myself and all sorts of things. And, and I think my circles got smaller and those kinds of things. So for me, it was a, it's a, both a very deep, deep, deep record as well as just like touching on a very light-hearted side of myself. This process for the album, for Secret Life of Planets, the nucleus of it was like the end of 2013. We like put an idea together and then it's just kind of been a gradual process. The real meat of things happened when I came back to South Africa and then we got to sit in studio and spend two hours at a time listening to vinyl, listening to like records, listening to um, some of the references. You discover music when you're young or however old you are and it influences all the things you do as a musician. Alistair is a digger, like really, really goes in and looks for rare, rare voices and production and that kind of thing. And some of the stuff that he would pull, it inspired me to really use a different voice that was kind of more earnest and really pushing, pushing out a little bit further than what I'm usually used to. There was an assortment of, of machines and um, a lot of them played a part in the album. Uh, the Lindrum, it's a great machine, great drum machine. We got the Arp Odyssey. This is the baby. Um, it's like, well, it's, yeah, let's turn it, let's just give it, give it a little sound so you get a reference. It's, it's space. It's, it's just like a crazy analog machine. And this, the sounds from this mainly combined with the 808 drum machine made up a lot of the body and the creative. And then there's like modulator. So you can obviously create some interesting textures and uh, creating the sounds for the album was very deliberate. Uh, it was like making sounds that people aren't sure how you got them. And then all of this runs through. This is uh, a German uh, tube preamp and tape delay. And it was used, it's 1964, it's quite old. And it basically, it's, an, oh, it's, it's, it's just driving that 808. You can almost hear the background kind of. Running it through an old piece of equipment like this, you get these sonic characteristics that, that really, um, they're very hard to replicate in the box, as they say, like in the computer. Another important part of this process was the Eventide. 
Eventide um, harmonizer. So this is, that's the dry vocal. And then this is an example of a really big reverb. You can give it a lot. Yeah. This is just a random little program here. It's like, I told my dad when I was 18 that I wanted an MPC because I knew the DJ Premier used an MPC. Not the best drums to chop there, but there's even some 808. Don't want to get sued for samples there, so we won't play that one. I don't do sequencing in the MPC because I, I find um, from my workflow, it's faster to create maybe eight bar, four bar parts, and then put them in and then chop them in, in there. As you can tell, these sounds are pretty cut off, but. But it gives, it has a, um, a swing about it and a feel that's just very, um, I'm, I'm used to it and I'm, it's comfortable and it glues things in a way that uh, I, I like better than making drums in the computer, but you know, we, we definitely use this on probably more than half the record it was involved. Yeah. The Juno though, the 60, this one is um, on I'd say 75% of the record. If not every song, I think we tried to sprinkle bits of it. So you know, you, you can, with the hold function, you just, you can And then you know you got all these these kind of when I walked into CDR, people aren't sitting there and like kind of like, yeah, like, you know, stroking the the ego of the of the person that's playing the beat and you know that kind of thing, or like how there's a lot of this kind of like bowing down and facing forward and the wow, dude, it's amazing what you're doing. And like, yeah, you think so? Yeah, you want some of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't that. It was it was um, people chilling and, and kind of milling about and listening. Um, the people that were there, I could tell were music people because you, you, when you're a music person or a producer or a, a, a musician, you, you can hear you can be in the middle of a conversation and that's what it was, you're, you're, you're speaking, but it was like, oh yeah, that, that, that's, wow, that's great, that sounds it. And then, you know, everyone's got a little bit of ADD, like oh, yeah. <laughs> the artists the are all, and you understand. And so you, there was a lot of these kinds of, and so you've got the, uh, the little mix of um, like discussing what's happening and then, you know, catching up a little bit on life. Also mentioning how the snare doesn't maybe have the right reverb or like yeah. those kinds of things. Um, and I thought it was amazing. Like I thought it was a really great, um, yeah. it was a really great, um, a really great concept and a really great environment to have, to come to and be able to showcase or to be able to just play your stuff in that kind of environment without setting it up as being a bravado thing. Shifting the cryptic sideways. The only way there's nothing there. <laughs> there's no actual rhythm there. No, it's so funny. Right? Here we go.
anybody who's trying to make a living making music, definitely talk to as many people who've been in the business. If you can find them, just like talk to as many different people as possible. I want to be 70 years old making music and being more excited about it than I am even now. And use your language. Grinning and spinning that old bitch perfect web.